everybody. Welcome back to the Model Train Outsider, the show where occasionally I actually do talk trains. I am Anthony Dodge, and as usual, I am joined by the ghost of 2015 me. <sighs> okay, I'm here. What's up? What? No union meeting today? Nope. Any rants from last week you want to finish and continue on? Nope! No new exploits, no new complaining about how lazy I am and why I'm not getting to work on anything. Nope! I'm my normal, inspirational, positive self. Wow! But I don't think the word normal is one that should ever be used with you. Nor you! Well, we don't want to go down that road, do we? Um, no. Let's just move on. <laughs> and it's been a while, too. So, you've been working on the layout, haven't you? That's why I'm here. A bit, yeah. The dumb and horse platforms are done, maybe? No, not yet. <sighs> Figured as much. For goodness sakes, have you accomplished anything of note that's worth making an episode about? Yeah. I've been finishing the seating areas, trying to get those done. I've almost finished the elevators. I've been making all the official Dumb Horse signs and logos, and even the hanging down digital display signs for the train and platform and delay announcements and such. Big! Don't do it! Deal. And that's episode worthy. Maybe. Maybe not. You've done something else? Yep. Alright, let me see. You've working on the seating areas, you've almost done with the elevators, you've done some of the other little things the signs and then let's see last week's episode you talked about doing the lights so what is there you did it yep all in and set to go you have speakers and sound in the canopies now bingo nice guess well i did read the opening credits so my inspirations have finally been working with you why is it when I figure something out, work on it, and get it done and I'm happy with it, you take all the credit for it? But when something's not working out, or I'm still trying to figure it out, that's all on me. And it's my fault. <sighs> because I am the part of you that inspires you and gives you the ideas. You're the lazy side who has to figure it all out and work on it. The practical side. Well, if you're so great at being inspirational, why do I have to trash 90% of your ideas before I finally figure out one that works? Hmm? Explain that. Well, it's... Got it back. Hey, I'm stuck in the ethereal world. You're in the living world. I give you the visions. You do the practical work. We're a team. Isn't it wonderful? Yeah, sure. Good excuse. So, how did you do it? He asked knowingly. Well, let's look at the video and see how I did it. Okay, now the Delman Horse platforms, and I'll put a picture here real quick again, which I showed in the last video, are actually a two level system they have a uh, couple of I-beams and then dozens and dozens of other I-beams that cross. Well, I didn't run true I-beams all the way across because I need the space inside. So what I've done is I have a light system, a little LED light system is in here and I've got some tape just holding some wires down while glue sets. And uh, I've already tested the lights as I showed in the last uh, video and uh, they work beautifully but all this will be covered by a thin 
piece of plastic which will act as the faux uh, rain gutter which collects rain from the slanted roofs. The roofs, uh, the upper level of this two-part system slant in and channel rain through the gutter. And just like in reality, the wiring and the electrical, everything, plumbing um, and whatever else they have up here for the security cameras and everything uh, would run through this middle area as well. So this is actually kind of uh, really realistic other than obviously it'd be done a lot neater, but I'll be able to hide the ugliness. But here's uh, one of those two speakers and I've wired it. The problem is because this is such a thin area, true speaker wire wasn't going to fit in there. So I got myself some 28 gauge wire and that's these red and white lines running through here. And uh, so this is the first speaker and uh, the lines have been joined on to these red and white lines and then I spliced in as we come down here I spliced in the wa the wires from this speaker and then I take them out and the wires will all be hidden by a downspout but the goal is to have station announcements and other information announcements that you would hear at a platform coming through speakers right at the platform so I have two speakers wired up so how am I gonna get sound to them? I can't direct wire these to my central station three or anything else. So my idea was I will wire them and run them to my tablet or smartphone or any other device and use a 3.5 audio jack, a 3.5 millimeter audio jack, your standard audio jack you have on headphones, that you have on anything you want to plug into a tablet, a smartphone, or even a laptop computer. So this would give me the ability to run this in and then I just would use a media player in my control area which uh, you've seen plenty of if you've watched these videos. Now there's a lot of different ways you can do this but because I used to really do all kinds of audio craziness I have a lot of old audio pieces laying around. And so I happen to have this. It is an audio jack that ends with two female RCA connections, also known as monorail or monorail. I like to say monorail because otherwise it sounds like you're saying monorail. Uh, but it's monorail uh, audio connection. What this does is you have a, and you could think of this as the two lines coming out of your uh, earbuds or your headset, your headphones. You have the audio signal comes in here and it gets split into your left and right audio. So if you've ever wired speakers, uh, some of your entertainment systems would have had these in the back and you've run the speaker wire. But in this case, I have old standard line wire and I have RCA. How am I going to get this to this? These two wires coming off the speakers. Now, the two speakers I have are technically right now mono speakers. They have two wires that come off of them as standard and you can wire one up and have mono or you could wire two up and have stereo. But one would be a left and one would be a right. That's not how this is wired up. These are wired up to receive the same signal. So that creates another potential issue. I have a stereo signal which I'm technically running to mono. Well let me show you how to solve all these problems. So if you're like me, you have a lot of these laying around once you upgraded to DVD and Blu-ray and um, started using first composite cable, then it was optical cable. Now the newest cable is HDMI, although various forms of optical cable are starting to make a comeback. And of course you have Bluetooth. I always hang on to a few because you never know when you're going to need them. So let me show you how you can connect this to this using this. 
So I'm just going to cut these off at that bracket. And for all those watching, yes, I am using these behind camera so it makes it a little more fun. So I'm just going to cut them all off. And I don't need the yellow. Now, if you have never done this before, you may expect to find one wire in here. Well, there's more than one wire. You can't see it here, but there's actually two wires in there. Maybe you can see, if I hold that in real close and it focuses, you might see one line and you think there's insulation, but actually there's two lines. So what I'm going to do is, I'm going to, there you go, you can see this. I'm going to use my cord cutters here, strip this away. Sometimes you twist it, but this is the right size. And when you strip it off, what you'll see, and because this is white, they just like to do it, you actually have, can you see this? This is copper wiring, but there is a second plastic insulated line inside. Focus, go on, focus. This is actually another wire. This is actually your positive and it carries the audio signal. This wire that wrapped around it was your negative line, but it's also your, sign, your, your noise reduction. It actually helps insulate the main audio signal from outside electrical influences. It's a negative line. Now, to get these speakers to work, this is all I need. And I could be done with this right now. All I do is twist these up. And because of the way these uh, speakers are wired right now, it's not even left-right since they're both on the same signal. It's not a left-right signal. It would not matter which way I go. I could touch white to red and the negative to white. Traditionally, we tend to run um, the, the white or the white line on speak, white dotted uh, casing usually signifies the negative, but it really doesn't matter as long as you're consistent, as long as you connect the same sides to the same sides. You run a positive wire and you run that same line to another positive input, you're all good. But technically right now, all this would do is complete the circuit. The speaker has two wires, but because it's one speaker, it's not technically left right, it is just positive negative and you're just gonna complete the circuit. Now on here, I specifically have the white set up as negative and the red set up as positive. But for what I would do here, all I would do is splice these together and I could do it either way, but I would splice these together, plug them into this jack, and I'm done. That's it. Now, if you hate the idea that this is an extra step, yeah, it probably is. You can actually go buy online. You can buy the same audio jack, but instead of dead ending in RCA male or female, they'll dead end in wire and you could just directly wire. That would have worked as well. I just happen to have all this and rather than cut the lines here and wire to wire, why not just have the RCA jacks and it's just one less cut I'm making. But yes, there's many different ways you could have done this. So, I'm not going to do just this. This would work just fine. The problem is, I would only be getting because this is a left-right signal. This part is left-right. It also runs audio negative because uh, when you have this, if you look at the end here, this outer piece right here, this outer piece, that's your negative circuit, and the inner joint is where the positive signal would go in. When you take one of these, the nub here is positive. You'll notice these are separated from each other. So this is your positive, which carries the audio signal, and this is your negative. So I could connect this, and just to make sure people don't get upset, I could do this, and when this is connected up, and I plug this into the music audio source, I will have sound. And I'll demonstrate having sound at the end of this video, obviously. However, 
I'm only going to get a mono signal, but also I'm only going to get a left or a right because coming out of the jack, this is left right. They're both positive negatives on the end, but one is a left signal, one is a right signal, just like for your headphones. And there's a reason that they say this bud goes in your right ear and this bud goes in your left. So I would not get necessarily certain levels of sounds out of the speaker because it's not connected here. So what I'm going to do is what we called when I was a kid, fake or false or imitation stereo. It's not really stereo. It would be the same thing as, as if you bought a stereo vinyl album in 1965 when stereo albums first started really hitting the mass market and played it on your old record player that had one speaker. Now some albums back then were released both mono and stereo for the new stereo systems that were coming out to go with the hi-fi stereo. But there are albums, and I'm a Beatle fan, and uh, I used to have some vinyls before I lost them in a flood, um, where I had the record both in mono and stereo. And they did sound differently through that same record, single speaker record player. Because one was an album recorded in stereo that was being played through mono, and the other one was just a mono record. Now, why am I saying all this? Sounds? I want this to sound as realistic as possible. Therefore, what I'm going to do is I will also cut this wire. And I'm going to go ahead and splice them onto here. And I'll tell you what I do, and then I'm going to do it off camera where it's a little easier to see. So I will splice these sound, these negative lines together. So I will have both the left and right signals. Well, I'll demonstrate it in a minute. And then I will join the two audio signals together. I can do this. I'm not going to short anything out. It's the audio signals. I will join them together. So now I will have, quote, left, right sounds pick up. Because when this is all joined together, if you can picture this, and this is all joined together. Here is, quote, left stereo sound coming through. Here is right stereo sound coming through. So the white is, uh, let's just say that the white is right and the red is left. I still have to complete the circuit, so I need the two negative lines. So I will join those together. And I will then very carefully, that's why I want to do this off camera, I will remove the casing here on these two audio signals, the positive lines, and I will splice those together. So what happens is you start with one signal out of your device, it comes in here and gets separated into left channel and right channel. Well, I'm just rejoining them back together. I'm just rejoining those sounds back together as same way they came out of your device. Now I happen to have already done this with a set which I did on a, um, a quick uh, Model Train Outsider Facebook page just to show that I was getting some sound out. And uh, so you'll notice the cords are black here instead of the gray ones I just had, but this was ready to go. So again, I have the negative lines spliced here and the positive lines, notice the white coming out of the white, the red coming out of the red, they just do that for continuity's sake. They could have been purple lines for all that matter. But they are now, if I let this zoom in and focus, focus, focus. There you go. So now you can see that. So the two audio signals, the positive signals are joined together here, and the two negatives. I'm now going to take this and connect and I just connect red to red, white, white. It doesn't matter at this point anymore. As long as the positives and the negatives are combined. Once I go to touch it to the speaker wires, this is just positive and negative to complete the circuit. Those just run into two soldering points on here. This is just completing the circuit. The audio signal and the negative 
it doesn't matter. I can connect these this way. I can connect them this way. Either way, I will get sound. So, what I'm going to do is get this ready and see if we can play some sound coming out of my station speakers. All right. So, while I was off camera, what I did was I set up the wires coming out of my two speakers coming down here and I have set it up I've got this standing up so you can see I've got my red and my white I traditionally will teach uh, treat red as positive and white as negative all right let's zoom back around here for a minute I now have I like to jokingly call it my Frankenstein here's my audio jack and let me zoom back out a bit so you can see it a bit better. But here is my Frankenstein with the left and right signal coming together. The two positive lines over here. The two negative lines here. And I'm going to take the audio jack. And I'm going to take my tablet. And you can see me reflecting in here. This is my Samsung tablet. And if I open it up, you'll see I have a playlist which is called Train Station Announcements. This is just a bunch of various recordings I've made or I picked up from other people who share these files. These are German train station announcements. See me in the background reflected. And on the top of this is my jack input so I'm going to input this here but just to show you how this is going to work because I have to do this in steps since I'm one person doing it all I'm going to just hit play okay so there you go so anyhow, let's plug this in here, as you can see. So Frankenstein is plugged in. All right, so I've got that set up. I'm going to take this wire, and I'm going to, by hand, manually set them here just to test. And we will see if there's sound coming out of the speakers when I hit play. Now, I am going to do it first here so you can see... I'm going to hit play and let me touch these. Can you hear that? All right, let me turn the camera. I just disconnected for a minute so I can turn the camera. Zoom in. And again, I'm going to try to zoom into the mic because that also zooms in the, or, yeah, zoom into the speaker, but that also zooms in the mic. And I will touch them again while it's playing, and hopefully you can hear it because I am hearing it. should know from our past that when I'm jerry-rigging and making it up as I go along, it's not always going to be pretty. Yeah, you should tell that to 2014 and 2016 us. They never stop bragging about what they did in the bathroom and the kitchen and how we can't get a simple train layout to work. Yeah, I did do a great job on the bathroom and the kitchen. And even the new basement, I might add. That wasn't you. That was past you's. Oh, for good... Don't do it. Goodness sake. Can we just get back to the demo video? <sighs> sure. 
One last thing I'm going to do is move the camera to underneath where the speakers come through and see if the mic really picks it up from there. Okay, I've now flipped it over and have the camera mic as best as I can aimed in the middle of the two speakers. And let's see how the sound works in between. So, hopefully, next episode will be about the completion of the canopies and installing them. Whether it's a week away or two weeks away, I'm getting close. I have been working on other things, as I mentioned at the beginning of this video. So, I will say... Goodbye and happy dreams to you.